Go on, you sun-drenched California blonde. <laughs> oh, it's victory as ours. The engine is off, we're sailing. And uh, after the last two passages, which have been... Mostly motor. Mostly motor. Oh, it's just so beautiful. Uh, but we've been in uh, Carrick Fergus uh, for a couple of days because went and saw Beverly's mum had a, a little issue with the engine which was in the end nothing but you know what we're like we're worry but it's just the way we are Beverly is a worry wart she is now making me a little bit more not, cautious cautious yes a little bit more cautious although I wasn't completely cautious but that's another story only to be revealed privately <laughs> never <laughs> Never to be told. <laughs> but a few people know about that one in Carrick, but there you go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a lovely day and we're sailing and we're happy. Beverly gave me. <laughs> I have to say though, it's doing a good job of filling it. But um, we're just at the uh, secret anchorage. It's not really a secret, we've told everybody. Um, because, um, well, we'll be going up and this is a good way just to do a nice short run. So, what have you got in your Chinese bowl? Uh, this is uh, chicken and um, chili chicken noodles. And it's gonna be divine I can tell you now. Well Beverly and I have just done our passage plan. Um, it's to Gia and um, we'll be leaving here one hour before uh, high water and um, basically what I like about this particular passage is um, we've got our go back points one hour if we don't like it it's come back to Larne. two hours don't like it it's going to Glenarm. three hours don't like it go to red bay uh, you know so i've got my alternate places and then at three hours it's basically go for it or we've gone back because we've got a so solid two hours of sailing in the north channel before we're then going into slightly different tides on the outside of the mull. But it's down and we've got our alternate ports all sorted. So we've got our waypoints and we've got them all marked up in the passage planning book. Yes, and um, we're using the right symbol because we, we had to learn that, which is the plus, uh, the cross. And for our observations, it will be a circle. Um, and that's the observation. We've even done our course to steer um, because we're going to have a, a tidal push. Um, we've actually even put our course to steer um, for the two that will be affected by our tidal diagram. So we're quite very happy that we've done all that. It's just it's building confidence again and just... Um, we we both need to know what we're doing and we both need the weather to cooperate yeah that's always the thing <laughs> got to get the weather to cooperate but because we've got one two three back outs um you know we should be able to assess the weather by ourselves because windy we've got brilliant sailing weather inshore forecasts it's like a four six and i'm going you're not getting me in a four six so you've got an awful lot of different... And XC doesn't agree with either. And XC doesn't agree with either. So that's why it's going to be a go out and we will assess it because I tell you now, having three different plans, doing three different things is not good on the weather. 
Yeah, I think Mother Forecast should be awarded prizes for fiction. <laughs> she does always think that, but it's because it's such a complex... Um, now, don't you opine on Weather Forecast? You know nothing about him. I know, but it is complex. I'm learning little bits <laughs> every time. <laughs> like, I was really learning about sea breezes the other day, but... <laughs> bit bedraggled. Yeah we were doing very well with our passage plan um, we were ahead of our waypoints um, but then um, we could see a, a, a storm coming up and uh, Beverly looked on the internet and there was thunder and lightning because you could hear the thunder already couldn't you Bev? Yes and I could see the lightning track on the internet. And you can see the lightning track on the internet. That's so, coming this way. Yeah so I was more concerned about uh, downdrafts and um, fronts ahead of the storm, whereas Beverly was more concerned about the lightning. Yeah, we were the only boat in the sea with a big <laughs> metal stick right in the middle. <gasps> yeah, so um, we decided to come in, but that's uh, and we've come into Glen Arm, but that's the whole point of having uh, passage plans with alternate places that you can go. So that any one point uh, you can hear, I don't know if you can hear it, there was just some thunder there, but never mind, it was a rumble. <coughs> um, anyway, um, you can make a decision and that's why you have these passage plans. Well, we knew for this point in the passage our refuge was Glenarm. Glenarm, yes, because we were two hours in. Um, we were doing well on the passage, but also I have to be honest, Although we have done a passage and it's been throwing it down with rain, it, it won't be pleasant. <laughs> we're only a bit bedraggled. If we'd have done the passage, we'd have been like, oh. I suspect, to be honest, we just would have stayed below decks. And uh, we've taken a mooring uh, for the night, um, purely because um, the wind is coming from that side and um, the anchorage is on the south side, so we want to be further north and uh, further north is the moorings. But anyway, Beverly's uh, going off to uh, pay at the Honesty Box. Uh, which is apparently £15 a night, so not too bad for a mooring. Anyway, oh, there are some good news here on Salty Lass. We're at Gear. Yay! We're in Scotland. Yay! But the biggest yay yet is that the squeak is gone. Or at least massively reduced. Massively reduced. <laughs> It's gone from, because it's still in Bevy's hearing, Bevy's hearing is absolutely fantastic in comparison to mine. <laughs> it's gone from in my hearing to just in Bevy's hearing. <laughs> we'll settle for that. But yeah, happy days. We're nearly a squeak free boat. <laughs> Better get rolling quick. <laughs> I was going to say. A bit more to do. <laughs> Bev's drifting. Drifting for years, what the hell? Right. Come on. <laughs> 
I was going to say. <laughs> Um, we weren't making very much progress, we were just getting snapped around. Uh, we had an apparent wind of 4.7. Um, so what we decided to do is we're adjacent to the entrance to West Lock Tarbert. And we were sort of kind of interested in it anyway. So we've turned tail and we're running in. And as soon as we've done that we've lessened the effect of the wind massively because instead of doing five knots in it, we're doing five knots from it. So it subtracts 10 knot off, so what was a 27 knot wind is now a 17 knot wind, uh, which is much more pleasant. But if I turn around and face it, I've just had a 27 knot wind in my hands again, so tempting though it is, I know better. So we're running into Loch Harbour under sail at the minute, um, and we're going to go and see what's up there and see what we can find to interest us. Bottom of um, West Loch Tarbert. Yes, one of the, one of the many. Because there are so many Tarberts, uh, and that's because um, uh, in Scotland it actually means an area where you do portage. So this lot West Loch Tarbert, you would have uh, ported, um, done portage uh, over to. Tarbert, which we've already been to, <laughs> but I think that was two years ago, or was it last year? We were nearly there this year. We were near, yeah. We went to Port we of Addy. Port of Addy, which is opposite it, but we have been to Port uh, Tarbert. East Lock Tarbert. East Lock Tarbert. We've been to East Lock Tarbert, but you would have portaged across, and that's why there are so many Tarberts in scotland never mind that it's rougher than sandpaper right and it's lovely in here it is um but we're going to anchor but it's been a very very short passage but it is exactly what we want from our scottish trip in that we're not here to sail hours and hours we just want to do short sails short bunny hops and just be somewhere different That little sail was short-lived, Bev. It was, wasn't it? Um, to be honest, conditions hadn't changed a bit. Um, we went out earlier, we weren't making progress, uh, so we gave up and came in here just because we were just beating northward at an incredibly slow rate. Our velocity made good over the ground was minuscule, we were like, like about a knot. Yeah. So it was going to take us like 10 or 20 hours to finish it. What's the point of that? So we came in here, nice little anchorage. 
sat here for three or four hours and thought to yourselves, what doesn't look too bad out at the minute? So we went and had a go. <laughs> in fact, if anything, I think it was a bit lumpier the second time we went out. In fact, uh, our um, triangles were exactly the same, weren't they? If you look at the tracks of the tacks, because I, I mean, I had us as tight in as I can. I basically got to the point where the Jenny was luffing up and then I um, eased off a bit just to get out of ceiling. And if you look at the track lines, the angles are exactly the same. It's like similar triangles in, in high school maths. So we decided if we made one not overground earlier, but on the same tacks, we were going to make the same speed again. So we just came back in. Yeah. But yeah, it's like in other words, a lovely little language. We're just inside Westlock Target, and I do mean just inside. The pilot, he says, it gets affected by swell from the ferries. I mean, the ferries been passed three times now, and I'm quite happy with the amount of swell. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I think the biggest problem is that the fact that the ferry, well, yes, it does get affected by the swell of the ferries, but you've got to bear in mind, they run every two hours. It's not like it's all the time. It's not like You've just gone into the shade, so we'll wait till the... Um... It's not like in Tower Cardinal where the ferry kicks you out of bed. Yeah, exactly, so... No, I, I, I can live with this. I, I'm happy here. I've got my cup of tea. I've, I've, I've had my toast and marmalade. And dinner's in Mr. D. But yeah. I am honestly wondering if it's changed out there. It is so mild in here. I cannot believe it's radically different out there. Yeah, but we've been out and we've... And we've been out and we've seen and... I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just struggling to believe it. Yeah, but that's what the purpose of a good anchorage is. You know, it mitigates the waves. It mitigates the wind. It does... Basically, it gives you a nice, calm place to be. It does, doesn't it? But I'm still going to go get the binoculars and have a quick look. Well, I've had a look. It's just as horrible. Ah. <laughs> you can say what you like, I'm staying here. I'm just going to drink the tea. 